They said the truth won't survive beside the lies that maintain the decaying faces of this place. Hey everybody, what's up? This is Hold the Truth Hostage, where if the truth was so important, we wouldn't negotiate with lies. Remember to strike that like button. Strike that like button. This channel's been shadow banned by YouTube and, you know, the likes help the people that are following the channel get notified and, um, you know, also we need to get to 300 guys. We got to get to 300 subscribers to help the channel out. You know what I'm saying? 300 strong. We need to hit that 300. You know what I mean? So now this video is about something extremely you know what I mean? This video is about something extremely important. You know what I mean? And uh, something that's been being pushed out all over the internet right now. And I did a video previously on it. Uh, the whole, you know, I called it, I did the body positivity thing. But I was not, you know, I was more on, uh, you know, pointing out the women body positivity thing. But I'm going to focus on the... um. Yeah, I'm going to focus on the entire thing, and this video is basically body positivity scam. Body positivity scam. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hey, yo, hold the truth hostage. How is it a scam? How is body positivity a scam? Here's why it's a scam. Notice it's all being used. Whenever they say body positivity, it's somebody fat and somebody obese. You know what I'm saying? It's about accepting how fat they are and how overweight they are. You know what I'm saying? Versus what true body positivity would be. And they used to push that in the 90s. I think they used to push it as, you know, uh, you're different, but you're, you know, you're different. It's okay to be different. You know what I'm saying? Where they, in the 90s, I think they used to push, you know, a kid with long ears. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I got, I got long ears. You know what I mean? I'm flapping them. Flapping them right now. Long ears. You know what I'm saying? They used to, they used to push, used to push, um, the whole narrative of, uh, you know, the whole narrative that, you know, you have a big nose. You're, you know, it's okay to have a big nose. It's, it's okay to have a slow eye. It's okay to be, you know, a little squinty. It's okay to have certain different aspects of you that doesn't fit the mold. You know what I'm saying? You're still healthy. In the 90s, that's what they used to push. They used to have, I don't remember the, I don't remember what they called the ad campaign or the advertisement, you know. I don't remember it. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't remember I don't remember it, but they used to have a campaign where they used to tell you're different, but you're you're still fine. You're still a great person even if you're different. You might have a big nose, you might have big teeth. You know what I'm saying? You might have uh you know you, you know what I mean? You you're different. That's it. That's what they used to do. But look at this whole body positivity thing. It's all about pushing obesity. It's pushing and normalizing being fat as body positivity. You know what I'm saying? You, you're, you're, you know, the biggest push of it. Look at it. You got Lizzo who's literally, you go look at her Instagram. The very, you know what I'm saying? The very image of quote unquote body positivity is they're pushing is Lizzo. And you know, they're pushing fat women. You know what I mean? Being fat, you know what I'm saying? As body positivity. You know, we all know the difference, you know, uh with the men and the women. I won't go into that, you know what I mean? That that should that should already be known that you being a fat guy isn't well even that that's not actually you know, we've had a lot of comedians, you know, you got your Jack Blacks, uh, you got a lot of fat comedians where they push the narrative that, you know, uh, you know, you're funnier when you're fat or something, you know, so, you know, it's been pushed with guys as well, but you look at somebody like Lizzo, you know what I'm saying, and why it's this whole body positivity thing is a scam, is that it's pushing 
the acceptance of obesity and being fat. It's not pushing true body positivity, which would be you're still healthy, but you just have different things. Maybe your nose is slanted. Maybe you have a huge upper lip or lower lip than normal. That's body positivity. You're still healthy. What we currently have right now, it ain't body positivity like in the 90s, like I previously mentioned. It's basically promoting the obesity. It's promoting it that it's normal, that it's a part of you. It's basically saying you should ignore your weight gain. You know what I'm saying? You should ignore your weight gain because it's natural. It's a part of you. I mean, you were born, you were born over a hundred pounds overweight. It's a part of you. You know what I'm saying? What happened is, you know, you, you got to look at, and, and, uh, you know, I was, I was part of a, a stream on, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, MGTOW dictionary, you know what I'm saying? Dope stream. Shout out to MD and the whole crew up there. You know what I mean? And we were talking about, they brought up something very, something very, man, they brought up something I didn't even notice. You know, they changed it from junk food to fast food. In the 90s, they used to call it junk food. You know what I'm saying? Because that would automatically imply that it's not healthy for you. It's not good for you. It's junk food. Then they turned it to a more accepting term, fast food. So it takes away that uh, that awareness that this is junk. You know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to be eating from McDonald's and, you know, Burger King, the Chicken Shacks and KFC like it's a regular meal. It's junk food. You know what I'm saying? Or potato chips. And they changed it all. You got to be aware that your stomach is your, you know, second brain and there's billions of dollars being made. So they changed it from being called junk food to fast food. So now you're thinking that, oh, it's just food that's made extremely fast. It's not unhealthy for me. It's not junk food. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, they, they made junk. They removed the stigma of it being junk food to fast food, which made it easier for you to digest mentally. And if you can easily digest it mentally, you can easily digest it physically. So it became something where you're not thinking about it. Oh, it's just fast food. It's just prepared extremely fast. You know what I mean? It's not unhealthy. It isn't junk food. You know what I'm saying? And and this whole narrative of body positivity is to push that, you know, it's to push obesity. Because here's the thing. You're going to have less people that are born different. What I mean by different, you know, with a big nose, you know what I'm saying, a bigger bigger mouth, you know what I'm saying, weird ears, that won't be as mainstream. Not the majority won't be born like that, but it's easy for the majority to get fat. Anybody can get fat. Anybody can become obese, whether they're in a wheelchair, whether they're crippled, whether they just came back from the war anybody can get fat you know what i'm saying so we need to we need to push that being fat is okay being unhealthy is okay that all this extra weight you're carrying on yourself is part of who you are ignore the fact that it's excess fat that you've put in your body no it's normal it's who you are and what you have to understand is that and and I mentioned this before in my you know my other video about you know fat acceptance and body shaming. What you have to understand is what happened is the clothing industry, the clothing industry back in the nineties there used to be stores where you know what I'm saying a, a a big woman you know a fat woman you know what I'm saying or a fat man whatever. They had to go to special stores or they had to look for a size that is, you know, limited. You know, there's a limited amount of this size. You know what I'm saying? They only sold, you know, sizes for, uh, you know, the average body type, you know, healthy and in shape or just average. You know what I mean? But what happened is once fast, once the, once the word junk food was removed and, you know, you had fast food. I mean, I remember... 
I remember when Wendy's used to have them commercials, man. I think it was either the late 90s or early 2000s where Wendy's was like, we're open at midnight now. You know what I'm saying? Wendy's is open at midnight, you know, the drive through You know what I'm saying? McDonald's, you know what I mean? They push, they remove the stigma of it being junk food and they push that it's fast food. So, you know, now you had more people eating than ever before, man. More people eating uh, at late at night, you know what I'm saying? Going to get a fix from McDonald's and so on. And what happened is people were getting heavier, more, you know, more overweight. And what happened is the fashion industry finally figured out they were losing money. They were losing money by ignoring the weight changes. You know what I'm saying? They were losing money by ignoring that the majority, more people are obese and getting more overweight than ever before. You know what I'm saying? They were losing money by not catering to that demographic. So what happened is the fashion industry started getting analytics, started getting reports with the fast food industry. You know what I'm saying? They started getting reports with the fast food industry so they can actually figure out how what is the population of obesity and uh you know people that are overweight. So once the fashion industry started getting that information, they started pushing bigger sizes. They started promoting that, you know what I'm saying, you're you know, you're you're you know, you shouldn't be body shamed if you're overweight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, out of shape, obese. They started pushing that. It's normal. It's perfectly fine. You know what I'm saying? And, and what this does is it works, you know, with the fast food industry. It benefits that you could openly. Like if you look at a lot of fast food commercials now, back in the 90s, they didn't really have a lot of fat people in the commercials or overweight people. You know what I mean? Overweight people in the commercials. They had, you know, a lot of average sized people. You know what I'm saying? And to me, you would see them. They're average sized and, you know, they would go to the, the burger joint and eat. You know what I mean? They didn't want people to think that you're getting fat, you know what I'm saying, by going to the, you know, the, the fast food restaurants. You know, going to get some fried chicken and, you know, pizza and cheeseburgers at 12 p.m. So they would advertise with average looking people, people that aren't obese, because what the, what was missing with the fast food restaurants was it wasn't fashionable. It wasn't fashionable to be overweight. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't fashionable to be overweight. So the fast food restaurants, they didn't advertise it as so. And I remember and I remember, uh, it was a while ago, it's probably, dude, it's probably over 20 years ago, man, in the 2000s, when they started, and, and I'm going back to Wendy's again, you know, Wendy's used to have the advertisement with Dave Thomas, you know, the founder of Wendy's, you know what I'm saying, they used to have Dave Thomas there, you know, uh, founder of Wendy's, and then one day, I saw Wendy's ad with his daughter. You know, who's, who the Wendy's logo is based on. And you could see she's overweight, man. She was overweight. He said, my father, Dave Thomas, represent his restaurant. She's overweight, bro. She looks like she looks like she gets Wendy's for free. You know what I mean? Back then, I didn't look at it. I didn't look at it like that. I didn't look at it as a negative. You know what I'm saying? You know, I didn't look at it as a negative, but they pushed they put the Wendy's mask, they put the girl, you know, the the daughter of Dave Thomas, the owner of Wendy's, you know what I'm saying, on the video. She was fat and old, she was fat, dude, you know, but they pushed her as, oh, my dad owned Wendy's, and it's a wholesome restaurant, and look at me, I'm his daughter. And, you know, she was built, she was built like she, she injects Cheetos into her neck, you know what I'm saying, Flaming hot Cheetos directly into her neck. You know what I mean? Just, you know what I mean? Right into her throat. You know, but uh, what happened is when the fashion industry and the fast food industry got together, it became fashionable to be overweight. So you would see ads with bigger people. 
You know what I'm saying? Unlike the 90s where they have thinner, more average people going to the restaurants, the fast food restaurants in their ads so fat people wouldn't feel any shame. It was like, oh, well, the skinny people eat at the fast food restaurant. So it's okay for me to be eating at the fast food restaurants. You know what I'm saying? It's perfectly fine. You know, so now you got... You know, uh, I think it was 2010s, they started pushing the whole body positivity through fat people. Because anybody could be fat, man. It's far more marketable that, you know, anyone could be fat at any time. You know what I'm saying? So if you normalize it, you have the majority being okay with it. You know what I'm saying? So what happened is, like I said, the fashion industry started getting uh, reports from the fast food restaurants. They met, they came together. You know what I'm saying? The, the the fashion industry got all the info. That's why you see a lot of fat people dressing up fashionable. You know what I'm saying? Where they don't see it as a negative. And the other thing is this, is that when someone that's overweight invests in high fashion and so on, they're actually more loyal. They're more loyal to the brand than somebody that's healthy and in shape because think about it somebody that's healthy and in shape is trying to showcase to you their body and their fit their form on how you know how in shape they are which pushes you to see how they are without wearing the clothes it's like you see a you see a chick wearing clothes and she's in great shape you know what I mean? You're thinking about how she would look without the clothes. You're like, damn, that thing fit right. But when somebody's big and overweight buys the fashion, they're literally advertising the fashion. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to be that big and out of shape. So you're really looking at the fashion. You know what I'm saying? It's far more advertiser friendly when somebody, uh, you know what I'm saying? And they're not advertiser friendly, but it's far more loyal to the brand. It shows far more loyalty to the brand that when someone's overweight and they're wearing it because they're saying, man, I don't care. I don't care about my weight. I don't care about my body, but I love this, these Louis Vuitton jeans. You know what I mean? I love this, um, you know, uh, you know, Fendi. I love Prada. I love these nice clothes. My weight, none of that matters, man. My health, none of that matters. Nothing matters more than this fashion right here. You know what I'm saying? So when somebody's overweight and they're wearing high-end fashion, they're showcasing far more loyalty to that high-end fashion than somebody that's in, you know, in, in good shape. You know what I'm saying? Or in, in average, well, you can't even say average no more. Obesity is average. But, uh, you know, overweight is average. But, you know, someone that's in shape doesn't showcase as much brand loyalty because they're still more about being in shape than the brand. But someone that's overweight, it's sending, even to the, to the skinnier people, it's sending a message that, damn, this brand is so good. It's so important to wear and wear this brand that, dude, your weight doesn't matter, bro. You could still wear, even if you start declining, you start losing these six-pack abs and start getting out of shape. At least you still going to have this clothing line and this brand. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's why, you know, you're still going to have this brand you could wear, man. You still going to look good with the clothes, you know? That's why you would look at something like, uh, that's why they push the whole body, you know, body, you know, what is body positivity. That's why you see all the body positivity mascots are overseas, you know, overweight, your Lizzo's and overweight, uh, you know, overweight models now. You know what I'm saying? It's no longer BBWs or big, you know, big girl model and they just normalized it. You know what I'm saying? They just said they're regular now. You know, that's why you see on Sports Illustrated, some of these some of these companies are willing to literally sacrifice themselves for the agenda. Why is a big ass cheeseburger throating, you know, cheeseburger throating girl on the cover of Sports Illustrated? You know what I'm saying? The last thing she does is sporting. 
You know what I mean? Eating and chewing is in a sport, you know? So, you got that's why I see a lot of brands sacrificing themselves for this thing, you know? And, and the other thing is this, man. These brands already know. I'll give you an example. These brands already know that if you're a man, it don't it don't matter what they're advertising to. They could be advertising fat women wearing these clothes. Like if you go to Macy's, you'll see it. And they know you're going to look at the hotter woman wearing the brand. You know, remember that old saying where they said for a girl to look hotter, her friend is going to be far less attractive than her. And that's what they do in marketing. I, I went to a Target. I saw it. You see this uh, You see this big girl wearing the same clothing as her skinnier, more healthy friend. So you look even more at the skinnier and healthier friend. You know what I'm saying? The more attractive one. They know that you as a man, you're automatically going to disqualify the bigger woman is being more attractive, you know what I'm saying? You could see the weight issues and the health issues and the fact that, you know, let, let's be real. Here's something a lot of guys won't say, you know what I mean? You come from work lifting, let's say you come from work lifting heavy boxes or you just come from work stressed. And then you come to sleep with your girl that's way bigger. So now you got to struggle to lift her up. It becomes a chore. It becomes work rather than she's of the right weight. You know what I'm saying? She's of the right weight and you just, you know what I'm saying, take her into your arms and do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, they're, they're, the whole body positivity thing, it's really pushing the acceptance of being overweight and obesity. Because right now, you know, you, you go to Lizzo's Instagram, you'll see it that, you know, it's my body, I'm proud to see. The most, it's basically pushing the most fashionable thing you can wear is fat. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said, yo, that's why I tell people, man, what's the only thing you could wear that, you know what I'm saying, you don't have to wash. You know what I mean? You don't have to, it never goes out of style. You know, it, it's always going to be, it will always fit you. You know what I'm saying? You will always be able to wear this. And it's it's fat. You know what I'm saying? Your fatness will always, you'll always fit the 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 fat. You know what I'm saying? You'll always fit the fat. You could get fat heavier as much as you want. You know what I mean? And you'll always be able to fit it. But when you're you're when you're thin, you gotta maintain that. And you know that that's why I told people too. Another thing is you know, you look at Lizzo pushing and a lot of other big women, these 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 uh, former supermodels that are too heavy now, too overweight, or these former female actors too heavy, too overweight, that come out and say, hey, man, they're trying to be negative about my body and they don't have their body shaming me. They don't want to give me more roles. And you know what I'm saying? They're signaling this thing, man. You know what I mean? And they'll get advertisement uh, from maybe the fast food joint supporting them or the fashion industry supporting them. You know, in the background to put them on these, uh, you know, magazines and so on because it pushes the narrative of acceptance. So it, it's made fast food is now part of our culture. I mean, you know, right now you go to New York, you know, there's some pizza joints open 24-7 and people eat there. 24 7 you know what i'm saying and you know that's the thing with the body positivity thing they're pushing it that you being fat is a part of who you are so now this benefits so many consumer bases it benefits the fast food restaurants it benefits the clothing industry and it benefits big farmer it benefits the pharmacies because now you're going into the supermarket taking heart medicine. You know what I'm saying? And and you're you're just saying, oh man, I just don't feel so good. My heart. And instead of you looking at, hey, you know you're overweight and your body's strained by uh you know your weight. No, it's just how I've always been. It's just normal with who I am. So you identify yourself and the fat you carry. As part of who you are, your identity. 
You know what I mean? By having it that people accept it as their identity rather than, you know, weight that's on them that needs to be removed, it's easier for them to maintain it and participate. So now you got you got overweight people going to the doctors for medicine or back surgery. You know what I mean? They're going they're going to the doctor for back surgery to actually you know, have surgery to maintain, you know, make it easier to live with this weight. You know what I'm saying? Make it easier to live with being overweight versus actually going to the doctor and saying, I need to lose some weight. Help me get on a program. You know what I'm saying? It makes it easier on the doctors to say, hey, take this pill, take this surgery. The doctors can upsell. Instead of the doctor saying, you got to lose some weight, I'm going to put you on this diet. Nope, you got the doctors putting them. Here's some pills to ease your back pain, painkillers. Let's get you some surgery for your back. You know what I mean? Let's not lose weight because your bones are carrying weight far bigger than they should be. No, 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 no. You need to just get some surgery, take these pills, take this medicine. You know what I'm saying? That's why a part of me is like, man... If only I was a doctor, dude. It's so easy to make money nowadays, you know, since they're pushing that being unhealthy is normal. So, you know, you don't have to really try to get people to be healthy. So easy to make some money now. You know what I'm saying? Somebody comes into the office, you know what I'm saying, over 300 pounds, far overweight. You just say, you could just recommend them a back surgery. Yeah, don't lose weight, you know, to remove stress on your back. Nope. Or go on a diet, nope, just get a back surgery. Then they'll come right back for another back surgery, hip surgery, all because they want to maintain staying at that weight and having an easier time moving all that weight around with their body. And another thing you got to understand is besides, you know, anyone could be fat rather than true body acceptance where, you know, you might have a, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I mean? Your skin, some parts of your skin might be too white. You know what I mean? Uh, some of your color of your skin might be off. Might have bigger ears or deformed nose. You know what I'm saying? That type of real acceptance isn't pushed. You know what I'm saying? Because it isn't, you know what I mean? You won't be able to have as many people in that, you know, that advertisement group. And another thing you got to understand is it's easy being fat. You know what I mean? I, I like to say that the number one practice religion in the West is, you know what I mean, obesity. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, obesity or uh, being overweight is the number one religion because you don't need to read no, you don't need to read a book. You just need to read a menu. Anybody can participate in this religion. There's the only standard is to eat, you know, eat as much as you want, when you want, you know what I'm saying? That's why I say, you know, obesity is the number one religion really in America, you know what I'm saying? In countries like it, you know, it's how, you know, how much can you eat? It becomes the number one importance, you know, and that's why you have so many people participating. And another thing I'm going to tell you, and uh, this is the biggest thing is that, you know, what is it? That guy... You know, a lot of a lot of guys in this space, especially earlier on, like to point out to this experiment a scientist did where they kept feeding these rats. You know what I'm saying? These mice, they created like a, a freaking utopia for these mice and they just ate and started dying, you know. But and they a lot of these guys like to point out to, oh, that could be us in our society. Nah. This is why I keep saying a lot of guys don't have a multi-layered way of thinking. They just think in, they think in uh, terms of reaction. Oh, she cheated on me because of this. React. They don't break it down how it's done. You know, that mouse uh, sub, you know, experiment, you know, showcased what happens when you have a lot of mice have all the food they want. But they didn't, these are mice. They're not going to come out with a hover hover carts, you know, they're not going to come out with things like you go to Walmart where you see these, these, uh, big ass carts where a woman, where a man or a big person doesn't even need to walk. They just take these carts to keep eating, keep feasting. 
You know what I'm saying? Mice wouldn't think of that. You know what I mean? And that's where you look at these guys and you're like, dude, you know that's a mouse, not a person. You're not that smart. But um, what's happened is when 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 society removes, like we got fast food. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're homeless now, you could you could eat good. You know what I mean? You could still eat. You won't really starve. You know, when you remove the the need to eat as a, you know as a necessity for survival when food is abundant and it's there i'm not saying it's healthy or whatever but when it's there what happens now you replace the necessity to eating to survive now what happens is the necessity to fit in to society it becomes fitting in to the social dynamics that becomes an aspect of survival that's why you see a lot of uh you know you saw a little you saw you could look it up a girl killed herself you know what i'm saying she killed herself because she didn't get enough likes on instagram you know somebody else killed themselves because they didn't get enough replies or likes or upvotes whatever because once you remove food out of the equation, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you remove starvation and it becomes such an ease of access to get food. You now, that that is replaced by needing to fit in. Needing to fit into the social trends. That's why you see it's easier than ever before. You know what I mean? Far easier than the 80s. Far easier than the 70s, 60s whatever you want to call it, for people to, uh, you know, fit in, you know what I'm saying, for people to, you know, people are seeking to fit into the society and what it's offering, you know what I'm saying, because dude, they're not starving anymore, they're not as hungry or worried about food, and that is replaced with the need to fit into the trends of society, you know what I'm saying, that's why you see so many, uh, you know, and then you you add in the factors of fashion, um, you know, the food, you know, the replacement of the wording of the food from junk food to fast food, you know what I'm saying? And you see a lot of people seeking to fit into these trends, you know what I'm saying? To the point where you got trendsetters as a job, uh, you influencers and all that, you know what I mean? And it's even easier for people to seek to be obese or are okay with it because it's a norm having access. I mean, now you can order food 24-7. Wendy's is open 24-7. McDonald's is open 24-7. You know, the, the, um, what they call that, the, the, the drive, what they call that word, the, yeah, the drive through you know, the drive through is open 24-7. But, you know, you won't have a supermarket that has a drive through You know, the produce with fruits and healthy stuff, it, it won't be open 24-7. But the fast food joints is open 24-7. And another thing you got to understand with this whole, uh, you know, body positivity movement is and how easily... It is to manipulate society is you got to look at the black community. You got to look at the black community with how easily they've, you know, what I mean, they when when the straight hair comb was made, the straight hair comb, you know, what I'm saying there was actually a black woman who made the straight hair comb. You know, what I mean, it, it, it will keep your hair straight. You know, what I'm saying, and, you know, it would have benefited a lot more white women. In reality, you know, their hair straight. This would keep it straight from curling up. But what happened is you have the hot comb being used more by black women seeking to fit in with that image of the white woman's hair with perming their hair and so on. You know what I'm saying? So they, they sold that narrative that to be normal and accepted, you know what I mean? You had to have perms and... You know what I mean? A lot of black women and even black men at a time would perm their hair, would, uh, you know, get their hair straightened. And to this day, they still do it where they have a pro, 
a pro inferiority complex. You know what I'm saying? If you can have, and, and, and what I mean by that, I'm not saying it's not by choice either, but notice all the movies you watch. Notice the hypocrisy. You know, same movie company will say we need to, we need to promote acceptance and so on will be the same movie that casts a black woman with a weave on and a perm. You know what I'm saying? A weave on, a perm, or a wig. The same company that's quote-unquote promoting acceptance and promoting diversity. And you'll watch a movie and you, you see the lead black female character wearing a wig and wearing a weave or, wearing, or having a perm on. This is the same company pushing acceptance. You know what I mean? Racial acceptance and diversity. So, you know what I'm saying? If it's that easy to get the, to push that, because here's the thing, if they cared, they would have, no, no white-owned theater company, no white-owned media company would actually cast black women without, you know, recommending that they wear this wig or even have roles where they have them wearing wigs or weaved or permed hair. You know what I'm saying? Give me a minute. Yeah, but like I was saying, man, so if you can get, so you had the hot comb, you know, introduced to straighten hair, and if you watch a lot of films from a black perspective, same networks pushing in diversity, claiming equality, and so on, every time they cast a black woman, you'll see her wearing a wig and a perm, these, these same companies claiming that they they want to not, you know what I'm saying, they want to cast people correctly and have racial respect and diversity and so on. But you see the casting. You know what I mean? The reason I bring that up is because I'm trying to showcase to you that if they can promote and advertise people to accept a, you know, a pro-inferiority complex, then it's not hard to advertise and set up a situation and scenario where you have people accepting being overweight. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, that's what this whole body shaming thing is all about. You know? You know, that's what it's all about. So as easily as they can push the narrative of, um, you know, you know, body, you know, body positivity being attached. Think about this. They're saying it's body positivity that you're overweight, out of shape, and endangering your health. You know what I'm saying? And, and But, you know, they, this shouldn't be something you're surprised by. I mean, this is the very same government and very same, even corporations that were, even during uh, World War II, were still selling soda and drinks to the, you know what I'm saying, to the opposing side, so, you know, there's nothing surprising about it, but this whole body positivity thing, it's a scam, it's a fraud, and it's outright promoting death and unhealthiness, you know what I'm saying, as a positive, you know, oh man, they're teasing me because I'm overweight, and they're not giving me acceptance as I'm overweight, because you're carrying all this weight, you're literally the embodiment of of being out of shape and being obese. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing positive about that. But you see that's what they're pushing. So and it's because anybody can be fat. Anybody can be out of shape, but not anybody can have big ears. Not anybody could have, you know what I'm saying, different colored eyes, different you know what I'm saying, size, noses, fingers, you know what I'm saying, it's not as mainstream, so what they gonna push, they gonna push that for you to be pop body positivity, it's about you accepting obesity, accepting being overweight, and so on, you know what I'm saying, that's what they're gonna push as a narrative, you know, they're gonna push that, because that narrative actually makes it's it's far easier for the mass majority of the public to participate in. You know what I mean? That's why I say in the 90s, 
there was a real body positivity, accepting the differences, you know. This has been a uh, hold the truth hostage. This has been hold the truth hostage where if the truth was so important, we wouldn't negotiate with lies. Strike that like button and remember, that whole body positivity thing, man, it's no more than a scam and a setup to accept being overweight and killing, you know, harming yourself and for them to sell more products. You know what I'm saying? Sell more products as usual. And they're all intertwined. You know what I'm saying? The fast food restaurants and fashion industry, the pharmacies, they're all intertwined with this. You know what I mean? So this has been old the truth hostage. The truth was so important with a negotiate with lies. Peace. They said the truth won't survive beside the lies that maintain the decaying faces of